Hi everyone, I'm here to discuss with you the answers and the solutions to question 11 from section B of IBDB Maths HL Paper 1, November 2018. And welcome to GK Math. Now, this is the question. So, first one is find the roots of z to the power of 24 is equal to 1, which satisfy the condition that the argument of z is more than 0 but less than or equal but less than pi over 2. Expressing your answers in the form of r e to the power of i theta, where r and theta are elements of positive real numbers. So let's start with that. Um, okay, so when you say z to the power of 24 is equal to 1, so we are talking about z being a complex number. And uh, that means the we're looking for the 24 roots of unity. So that means there are 24 roots or there are 24 solutions. So the solutions are actually in the form of... Uh, in the form of C, uh, CIS or CIS 2 pi over n and then CIS 4 pi over n so you have to keep on adding 2 pi in the numerator of the argument and this is up to CIS 2 pi okay CIS 2 pi is actually equal to 1 so we always say that 1 is always a root of uh, unity so 1 is always one of the root or one of the solutions so you just have to stop until you reach uh, cis 2 pi. So in this case, our n is actually 24. So that means the solution uh, is going to be what? Uh, 2 pi over 24. Then you just have to add 2, two, two pi to 2 pi, and that makes, uh, that makes it 4 pi. So cis 4 pi over 24, then add 2 pi again. That will be 6 pi over 24. Add 2 pi again, that will be 8 pi over 24 and then add 2 pi again, that will be 10 pi over 24. So, um, now this z to the power 24 is equal to 1 should actually have uh, 24 roots, and you will be ending up with cis 24 pi, no, uh, cis 48 pi over 24, and if you simplify it, that will be equal to cis 2 pi, which is just equal to 1. But we have to satisfy the condition that the argument must be between 0 and pi over 2 all right and pi over 2 is uh, pi over 2 is the same as 12 pi over 24 so which means uh, we only have this five solutions satisfying this condition now uh, the next thing to do is for us to simplify this in such a way that the denominator will be equal to 12 and of course you can also simplify this further so that 2 over uh, 12 is uh, pi over 6 and then 3 pi over 12 you can also make this as pi over 4 and then 4 pi over 12 you can make this as pi over 3 so uh, we want this answers these solutions to be in the form of r e to the power of i theta so for the first one uh, now, you have to recall that r cis theta is equal to r e to the power of i theta. But in this case, our modulus, the value of r, is just equal to 1. So therefore, cis theta is just equal to e to the power of i theta. So in this case, uh, our theta is pi over 12. So the first one is just e to the power of pi over 12i. The second one is e to the power of 2 pi over 12i. And the third one is e to the power of 2 pi over 12i, e to the power of 4 pi over 12i, and e to the power of 5 pi over 12i. So this is our final answer for letter A. Now what about letter B? Let S be the sum of the roots found in part A. And we have to show that uh, the RES, okay, so RE means the real part. So the real part of the sum is just equal or is equal to the imaginary part of the sum so what is our s our s is the sum of the roots found in part a so in that case it is the sum of cis pi over 12 up to cis 5 pi over 12. now remember that cis is or cis theta is just the short for cosine theta plus i sine theta so which means cis pi over 12 is the same as cosine pi over 12 plus i sine pi over 12. So it follows that the real part, if you remember, the real part is the one that without the i. So that means the re of s or the real part of s is going to be cosine pi over 12 plus cosine 2 pi over 12 plus cosine 3 pi over 12 
plus cosine 4 pi over 12 plus cosine 5 pi over 12. Now the imaginary part, the imaginary part is the coefficient of i. So uh, in, remember that imaginary part should also be a real number, but that is the coefficient of i. So that means the imaginary part of s is sine pi over 12 plus sine 2 pi over 12 plus sine 3 pi over 12 plus sine 4 pi over 12 plus sine 5 pi over 12. So we need to show now that the, the real part of s is equal to imaginary part of s. Now since all of these arguments are actually less than pi over 2 or less than 90 degrees, so this, all of these arguments are actually acute angles. So if they are acute angles, then we can uh, use the identity like cosine theta is equal to sine pi over 2 minus theta or sine theta is equal to cosine pi over 2 minus theta. Okay, so by using these identities, we would know that the cosine pi over 12, because pi over 12 and 5 pi over 12 are actually complementary, so the sum is equal to pi over 2. So we can now say that cosine pi over 12 is equal to sine 5 pi over 12. Now we have to continue looking for complementary angles, and we can say that the next pair of complementary angles will be 2 pi over 12 and 4 pi over 12. Therefore, we can say that cosine 2 pi over 12 is just equal to sine 4 pi over 12. And then the next pair is cosine 4 pi over 12 and sine 2 pi over 12. And using the same identity, we can also say that cosine 5 pi over 12 is equal to sine pi over 12. And of course, this one, cosine 3 pi over 12, is equal to sine 3 pi over 12, right? So in that case, we can now say, or we have already shown that the real part of S is just equal to imaginary part of S, okay? All right, because a 3 pi over 12 here and 3 pi over 12, if you add uh, both, that will be equal to 90 degrees because 3 pi over 12 in degree is 45 degrees. All right, now what about the double i? By writing pi over 12 as pi over 4 minus pi over 6, so this is the difference of two angles, which is equal to pi over 12, find the value of cosine pi over 12 in the form of the square root of a plus square root of b over c, where a, b, and c are integers to be determined. Now, uh, we can write cosine pi over 12, therefore, being equal to cosine pi over 4 minus pi over 6. Now, this is a compound angle, so we can use the compound angle identity for cosine. And the formula is going to be like this. So, cosine pi over 4 times cosine pi over 6. Now, this will be plus sine pi over 4 times sine pi over 6. Since this is a paper 1, uh, we don't need our calculator to find the values for this special angles. Uh, cosine pi over 4 is actually square root of 2 over 2. Cosine pi over 6 is square root of 3 over 2 sine pi over 4 is square root of 2 over 2 and sine pi over 6 is equal to 1 half. So simplifying that and then it will give us square root of 6 over 4 plus square root of 2 over 4 and then express this as a single fraction then we have square root of 6 plus square root of 2 over 4 where a is uh, could either be 6 or 2 so we don't need to actually indicate the values of a, b, and c. Alright, so that means we have already uh, shown that the value of cosine pi over 12 is the square root of 6 plus square root of 2 over 4 which is in this form. Now let's go to uh, the last question. Hence or otherwise show that s is equal to half of uh, 1 plus square root of 2 times 1 plus square root of 3 times 1 plus i. So s is again referring to the sum of the roots that, uh, that we found in part a. So Let's start from there, okay, so let's be mindful of this because this one has 11 marks, so that means it will entail a lot of working here. So let's begin from the sum of the five roots again. So S is equal to the sum of these five solutions. And then uh, if you're going to expand this in such a way that cis pi over 12 is the same as cosine pi over 12 plus i sine pi over 12, now it's going to look like this, all right? So now I wrote it here in such a way that the real part has already been separated from the imaginary part so that we can use 
our answer from from the previous question in such a way that the real part is actually equal to the imaginary part, right? Okay. Now the next thing to do is uh, the next thing to do is we can okay we have found uh, this cosine pi over twelve from the previous question, um, which is equal to square root of six plus square root of two all over four, and then cosine two pi over twelve. We know the value for that. So the value that we need to find is cosine five pi over twelve. All right, so from the identity, this is just the same as sine pi over 12. So we can use now uh, pi over 4 minus pi over 6. So sine pi over 12 is equal to sine pi over 4 minus pi over 6. Now you can refer to your formula booklet to look at the formula for the compound angle identity for sine. And it is going to be equal to sine pi over 4 times cosine pi over 6 minus cosine pi over 4 times sine pi over 6. So sine pi over 4 is square root of 2 over 2 times square root of 3 over 6 minus this one is square root of 2 over 2 sine pi over 6 is equal to half. So simplifying that as a single fraction, then we will get square root of 6 minus square root of 2 over 4. So now we can uh, get this, okay, because we know that the real part is just equal to the imaginary part. So we just focus on the value of the real part. So cosine pi over 12 which is from the previous question is equal to square root of 6 plus square root of 2 over 4 cosine uh, pi over 6 is square root of 3 over 2 cosine pi over 4 is square root of 2 over 2 uh, cosine um, pi over 6 okay cosine pi over 3 rather is equal to 1 half and then cosine 5 pi over 12 is the value that we obtain from here which is square root of 6 minus square root of 2 all over 4. So I wrote here, this is just the value for the real part of S. So simplifying that, and then it will give us, um, okay, so express that as a single fraction, it would be easier. And then I'll combine the like terms, it's going to be 2 square root of 6, then square root of 2 minus square root of 2, that will be cancelled out. So what is left is just 2 square root of 2 plus 2 square root of 3 plus 2 okay and then all over 4 all right then we can actually bring out the 2 and then 2 over 4 is just equal to 1 half so this is now equal to 1 half times square root of 6 plus square root of 2 plus square root of 3 plus 1 so since we need to show then we have to get also a clue from here so probably 1 plus square root of 2 plus times 1 plus square root of 3 will be the factors of square root of 6 plus square root of 2 plus square root of 3 plus 1. So you can check by expanding this, all right, and we will actually be getting the same thing. So the factors of the numerator here will be the same as this one, okay? So again, this is the value for the real part of the S. Now, what about the imaginary part? It's going to be the same, right? Because from the previous question, real part of S is also equal to the imaginary part of S. Therefore, the S is equal to square root of 2 plus 1 times square root of 3 plus 1 all over 2 which is the real part plus i times the same thing okay so now let's simplify our s so what we can do is we can actually factor factorize we can factor out the common factor so this is actually the common factor so bring it out and we will get uh, square root of 2 plus 1 times square root of 3 plus 1 times 1 half and then multiply to 1 plus i. And this is exactly identical to the one that is given in the question. So that means we have already shown the identity, that the s is equal to this one. Okay, thank you very much. If you do have questions, please write your questions in the comment section. Thank you very much and see you next time.